Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk about uh, nuclear weapons. We're going to do a campaign uh, of people who have been working for many years and decades to ban nuclear weapons from uh, from this planet. And today I have the honor to be with Thomas Lee, who is an author of a new book coming out of Warning, a, nuclear, a novel for nuclear age. So welcome to Face to Face. Thank you. And, nice uh, to be thank here. you so much for accepting the invitation, Thomas. So maybe you want to introduce yourself and give a little bit uh, a context of how did you end up uh, fighting for against nuclear weapons and how the idea of the book came about. Sure. Um, I have retired now. I'm 83, and um, I spent 35 years as a biology professor in a Catholic college here in New Hampshire. Uh, I started my teaching career protesting the Vietnam War and the local Seabrook nuclear plant. I ended my career protesting the Iraq War. So, and there are a lot of protests in between. Uh, and um, so by 2005, I found myself writing my fifth book called Battle Babble, Selling War in America. This was a book about uh, the deceptive language used to sell war, uh, a book about the language about militarism. Um, our government, as you certainly know, has an unending insistence on war as the final arbiter of uh, disputes. Um, yeah. So a major motive that I had was a long-standing motive of, of writing against militarism. But now, of course, militarism is in the form of devotion to nuclear weapons. So we've gone, well, we, we've evolved from throwing spears and stones at each other to the point where we now, each human being now has a loaded gun up against their head. And that loaded gun is uh, composed of nuclear weapons. Um, and our government is perfectly willing to use these nuclear weapons, even as a first attack, if there is any hint that uh, we may be in some kind of danger. So uh, this is a terrible danger. Uh, it's an it immoral place to be. Uh, and so that was really the initial, uh, the initial trigger for uh, wanting to write something finally. This will be my ninth book. Uh, possibly my last. I've been going through chemotherapy lately, uh, but it's, it's something very important to me and very important, I think, should be important to the country. Uh, we, there are a lot of people who, for example, look back at, at nuclear weapons and said, well, we dropped a couple on Japan to win the war, which isn't true in the, in the first place. Uh, but now we have nuclear weapons to protect us. They're kind of hidden in full view. They're they're in the background. We don't think about them all that often. Uh, but this country has 13,000, or the, the world has at least 13,000 nuclear weapons. Most of them are owned by our country and Russia. Yeah, uh, and um, this country is perfectly willing at a moment's notice. These weapons are ready to go. Uh, and so we're really on a hair trigger. Um, and any accident, miscalculation, uh, or some kind of disturbed individual, uh, perhaps people remember Nixon wandering around the White House drunk, uh, and we try not to remember Trump, but we, we have to. Uh, Trump, Trump said that he would absolutely not um, forbid the use of nuclear weapons. In fact, he was quite curious as to why he couldn't really use them. So uh, we're in a we're in a terrible predic predicament. And so the title of my book, The Warning, a novel for the nuclear age, really is a fictional account uh, mixed in with some nonfiction uh, to, again, raise people's awareness again about this this terrible threat that we're facing. So, so when you say fiction, because I interview, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, a nun who, who was who is incarcerated, Marta Enesi, and that's how we, we end up in contact. So 
when you say it was a fiction, because a book it's based on a monk and two known. So which part of the fiction was it? Because <laughs> it seems to be then it's more real than fictions. That's interesting. I, I know Martha now. She it's an honor to have her here in the state. She's in a halfway house yeah. here in New Hampshire. In fact, we're having breakfast in the morning with her and a number of other oh, people great. that you know we would label progressives uh, in the state. Um, so yeah, the, the when I was planning this book, I initially thought of a nonfiction book, but that's been done. Uh, and I wanted to make an interesting story, which reflected the principles that were that were driving the um, the plowshares movement. Uh -huh. Plowshares movement is an anti nuclear movement. Yeah. Martha is part of that. Uh, the Kings Bay plowshares seven recently were imprisoned for yeah. entering a submarine base and so on. So I modeled a story around that. Um, since this is a an enormously moral issue, more than simply a military or a technical issue. Um, I, as my characters, I put a Benedictine monk, a priest, and two nuns, Sisters of Mercy, who involve themselves in civil disobedience against nuclear weapons, uh, initially against a couple of companies which are uh, here in, in New Hampshire. I, I, I put this this uh, scenario in New Hampshire. Here in New Hampshire, we have Raytheon and we have BAE Systems, both enormous uh, defense companies with billions of dollars in contracts. Um, and uh, the, uh, ultimately, I, I won't give away the whole plot, of course, but ultimately they do commit civil disobedience against a uh, Trident missile bearing nuclear submarine over in Portsmouth. Uh, they pay the price for this, and beyond that, I won't uh, tell the rest of it, but there are implications and ramifications for not only them, but for the community and for uh, the world in general. So, uh, yeah. But uh, I wanted to get across a lot of factual information about uh, the numbers of nuclear weapons, where they are, their cost, and so on. And so I put in a few nonfiction chapters here and there, uh, rather than put all this information in the mouths of my characters, uh, which would you know sort of interrupt the flow. But I think it worked out well. It's been very well received, and um, I'm very I'm very happy with it. So so to 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 explain a little bit then and the 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 action that the these people are doing, it's because uh, the dozer based gens. Is it's, it looked like a violent action, and because of mm -hmm. that, the people who are jailed, and after that, on halfway, like uh, like Marta, we we talked earlier, she yeah. has to go the whole process because it's not recognized as a non-violent action, and and so protesting against nuclear weapons, <laughs> who are the most violent ultimate. Um, um, uh, weapons you can find in this planet, fighting against that, it's considered a violent action. And so I, I just wanted to, to to mention it because I think for people to, to understand, then it has very big consequences in your life when you start to be arrested. And um... Sure, sure, of course. The government, sir, it's impossible for the government and the judicial system to recognize nonviolent protest against something that's so entrenched in our system. Uh, we believe in nuclear weapons. We actually believe that we're safer having thousands of weapons, which could, if used, could destroy Earth uh, and life on Earth and the planet. Uh, we're safer having them on hair trigger alert than not having them, which of course is absurd. But we can't admit uh, to the veracity the truth behind uh, these uh, these um, demonstrations. So, for example, what Martha and the others did is they cut a padlock, they went through a fence, and they spilled blood uh, as a symbol of the blood spilled in Hiroshima and and elsewhere. Uh, and they tried to argue in court, as others have for years, uh, that 
they had a religious motive. And the religious motive, of course, was killing humans. Uh, and uh, this was a protest against the white, the potential widespread slaughter of humanity. As they say, the ultimate logic of the Trident missile is omnicide. Uh, the courts would not allow a religious and a moral argument to be used. The only argument they could use is, well, the only thing they could say is, yes, we cut a padlock. Yes, we spilled blood. And the court said, well, then you'll go to prison for a couple of years or a year, uh, which is, of course, absurd. Uh, but um, people knew this going in. Uh, and these actions have been going on for many years. They're going on now all over the world, symbolic nonviolent protests, because, of course, as you know, uh, nonviolence is the only way towards peace. The only way towards peace is peace. Uh, war, war is not the way to produce peace. And, and uh, so not, these are nonviolent people, nonviolent acts, which are punished severely for being so openly nonviolent against this entrenched um, militarism. Yeah, so I mean, I don't want to go away from from your book and then talking about it because uh, it's another subject altogether. How the justice system work and well, it's part it, of my book. It's in the book and it's, it's in it's the one book. Of the things. Okay, sure. So because it's the problem of of nuclear weapon is in court you cannot talk about a nuclear weapon. You cannot talk about the base. You cannot talk right. because it's yeah. a secret. So you end up in court talking about something that doesn't exist, and and the only uh, things with, with, as you mentioned, is yeah, what did you do? You went to there, you clocked the lock, and then you get in. That was the only, the, the whole nuclear discussion, it's, it's almost uh, in non existent. Sure. If you go way back to the 60s when Daniel Berrigan and his uh, co uh, protesters were burning draft files, well, uh, one of their moving speeches was. Um, would you prefer to have us burn children in Vietnam rather than burn draft files? But the logic of the courts was the same. No, you can't do these awful things. Uh, we're going to punish you. Um, and of course, Dan Berrigan's brother, Phil, was married to Liz McAllister, who was one of the uh, Kings Bay Plowshare Seven. So, uh, so we're still fighting the same fight. Perhaps I shouldn't use the word fight here. Uh, the same nonviolent efforts absolutely and the 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 problem little bit on 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 what you mentioned is we still believe very much in nuclear weapon and it's keep the technology keep improving become a smaller more powerful uh and it seems to be then the budget keep increasing to develop even more sophisticated weapons um and the, the relation between the different allies or enemies like Russia and so on and so forth seems to be at stance as you can get. So I don't know if you mentioned it in the book, but how do you see the future? Because we have very few minutes left uh, of well, that of that strategy. Yeah, you bring you bring up several important points. For example, over the next nine years, the United States has committed six hundred and thirty-four billion dollars to modernize nuclear weapons. Uh, the idea seems to be that if you make them bigger and better and faster and more powerful, for example, the, the typical warhead on a Trident uh, missile is 32 times that have the force of that, 30 times the two times the force of Hiroshima bombs. And so uh, as relationships worsen among, let's say, between us and China, China right now is building 100 new. Yeah. ballistic missile um, silos. Yeah. Uh, and so that we're in a position where um, anything can happen and it might. And of course, the potential is far more than guns and, and, uh, and planes and so on. We're talking about a few of these weapons being ignited for any reason could trigger a, a, a cataclysm that would destroy most of life on, on Earth destroy civilization. And so this is a, this is a profound concern. Um, again, our government is 
including our present current president yeah yeah uh, so is certainly yeah, it's committed. not a political story because you can go left or right you end up sure. with the same direction obama uh, increased right. the budget exactly. uh, the, the president yeah. before him did the same thing and then the after did the same story so it's not like a, a, a ideological left and right story it's right really exactly. more or less on the as soon as you get to power in some ways love nuclear weapons exactly you can if you go too far left and you start talking about things like peace and nonviolence, um you you will not be in office yeah you have very few so let's let's close anything to mention about the book before we wrap it up well uh perhaps i can mention i i as i said i've written a number of books uh half of them through a standard publisher uh this time i was in a bit of a hurry uh, to get this out and i wanted to get it widely available uh at a low price and on kindle so that people could do it electronically so right. uh, i published it on amazon yeah. uh, for a low price uh -huh. uh, and i hope that for anyone who is interested um uh it's it's easily available in that format great thank you so much for being uh, in the show um, and um, um, I'm sure we will talk again very soon because I thank you very much. To go. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. That was your show face to face, and keep we please watching your news on Presenza.com, and uh, hope to see you very soon. Thank you.